We'll uh, finish up with Mr. Brock and then Mr. Kuzmirchuk. Thank you. Um, I have a, a number of, of uh, odds and end questions, uh, some loose ends uh, based on what we've discussed over the last uh, almost uh, three hours. Um, I want to clarify very early on in the first hour, my colleague, Mr. Barrett, had asked for uh, details and tabling of any and all correspondence in relation to the sale and the acquisition of both uh, condos. I want to specifically ask for any, and I appreciate that you said it a number of times, that Mr. Clark did not influence the decision to sell and the decision to purchase. But we still want any and all correspondence between Tom Clark and Global, Affair, Global Affairs in relation to both properties. Will you table that, sir? As mentioned, uh, I will be pleased to look into it and see what's available and get back to, uh, to this table. Okay. Now, in relation to the uh, 57th Street property, it was on the market for 235 days, just shy of eight months. It sold for $6.63 U.S. million. Um, did you pay full listing price or did you negotiate the price down to 6.63 U.S. Mr. Chair, always looking for value for money once again. I will turn to Robin to talk about the process of the negotiation on this one, which has been done, as I mentioned, with the uh, real I just, I just want the broker. I just want the question answered. Yeah. I don't need an explanation. Yeah. Yeah. Did you pay full listing or did you negotiate? There was a negotiation that took place and we paid uh, less than the listed price. How much less? Um, I think it's in the document that was shared with you in the, uh, it's 6.5 million U.S. Right. But how much from the listing price to the selling price? What was the difference? It was listed at, um, I, I don't remember exactly, but I think it was 6.89 million. 6.89 and yes. you bought for 6.63. 6.5. 6.5 million we okay, paid. Okay, so US. roughly what, three four hundred thousand dollars 400000 Yes. Okay. And um, with respect to the renovation costs on Park Avenue, how many bids did you receive from Global Affairs? The uh, renovation uh, was assessed by our quantity surveyors that are the professionals that basically assess the work that needs to be done based on plans done by architects. And um, we uh, never went to market for those renovations because we work with those numbers. Why wouldn't you go to market to get the best value? Is when we got the, um, the information that it was up now to 2.6 million, we wanted to change the approach and well, look at the Well, that's based on your options. internal numbers, though. Why would you not go market to see whether or not it would be a more feasible option by trying to find the best renovation cost possible? Again, to save the taxpayer further money. Why wasn't that an option? Well, the, um, the, the quantity surveyor are very, uh, are very good at uh, assessing the cost of a, of a project. So we, when we saw that the costs were escalating... Is that, what you, is that what you do for all your official residences? What, in terms do, of renovation costs? We, we do You don't look for best value? We look for best value. We we use quantity surveyors first to get an appreciation okay. of how much money it's going okay, to cost. Okay, let's move on. You talked about that it was not, the, the old property was not accessible. Can you explain, and you, I think you did, that one of the washrooms had to be accessible. I truly understand that. Those are Canadian codes. Um, but what was done specifically with the new property to make that accessible? Well, I understand that the, um, the the floor plan was looked at, and then it was determined that the options exist there for um, for an, uh, a, a, an accessible bathroom to be. Uh, to okay, and that that's being installed as we speak because Mr. Clark is not in that residence right now. Correct? No, he's not there, and I don't think we need to renovate. I think that the bathroom is readily available and accessible as it is. Okay, so you don't need to put any additional devices on the walls to make it even more accessible. It's just the ability to use a wheelchair to get into the washroom. Is that what you mean by accessible? That's, uh, yes. The width of the door was more accessible at the new location versus the old location? Yes. And, and you, couldn't, you couldn't renovate the existing entranceway to a washroom? There, like, there was like seven washrooms mm -hmm. in the old location. You couldn't just tear out the, uh, the door and, and make it accessible? Was that discussed? 
sorry, we're talking about the, the, the old, old property, Chancery. Park Avenue. Well, that was part of the renovation projects that we uh, we um, we looked at. It was to make it accessible. Okay, uh, and, it, and you also mentioned that, Real brief, and I had Mr. asked you questions Rock. about realty tax, or sorry, property taxes, monthly property taxes, and I explained to you that you are lying to Canadians when you say the new property has less carrying costs than language. the old, and I pointed that out to you. But then I also heard in reference to a Liberal colleague asking you questions that you are tax-exempt pursuant to, to the Vienna Convention. Can you explain that, please? We're out of time, but... Can you provide a very brief answer? Absolutely, and very quickly. Uh, the new property is definitely cheaper because of that. Uh, we will be tax exempt on the new condo because of that Vienna Convention. Absolutely. Mr. Sorry, there we go. Hey, there we go. We can hear you now. Chair, just a quick quick point of order. Yeah, hold on one moment, Mr. Kuzmerchuk. Yes, Mr. Genos. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just uh, I want to, um, at the end of my first round, I asked a number of specific uh, questions, which you said the witness uh, can follow up on in writing. I don't know that that was, was clarified, but I did just want to clarify, since we're towards the end here, that I would like a response in writing to my questions regarding uh, various transfer taxes, uh, mansion tax, et cetera, whether they apply and what the amounts would be. So just want to clarify that I do want the response in, in writing to that to be provided to the committee, as, as you had suggested. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jonas. Mr. Kuzmierczak, uh, starting clock, uh, please go ahead, sir. Sorry, we cannot hear you, sir. I'm afraid we still have no volume, Mr. Kuzmierczak. Majid, can uh, Mr. Chris Mirchuk, uh, can, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah there we go. Through now? Okay, Perfect. Gotcha. Go ahead, my sir. Yep, and apologies. your time is up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead, please. We'll start at five minutes, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, Mr. Cousineau, I wanted to ask you how long you have been in the federal public service for. Mr. Chair, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, I think my gray hair reflects that I've been in the public servant uh, for 30 years. <laughs> for, thir for 30 years. So pretty much your entire adult life, you've been in the, in the federal public service serving this country. Is that correct, sir? Give or take, yes, absolutely. Sir, I wanted to say uh, thank you for your service to this country. And I wanted to say thank you uh, to all the public servants that serve our country with commitment and dedication and integrity and grace. And I say that, sir, because I did not appreciate some of the comments by my conservative colleagues that impugned your integrity. Uh, and I wanted to just simply go on record and to say that I thought that some of the comments by my conservative colleagues were beneath this committee. They were disrespectful and they were undignified. And I wanted to tell you, sir, we appreciate, I appreciate, your decades of service uh, to this country. And I thank you for that. You mentioned that this process was free of any political involvement. All procedures for procurement were followed by the book, by the book. You said that this process was well documented. Indeed, as I understand it, 88 page analysis was made on this decision. All the angles were looked at to make sure that Canadians got the best value for money. He used the word diligent, visited 21 properties, were visited and looked at, value anywhere between $8 million and $21 million, made sure that Canadians, when we did make that decision, it was on the lower end of that scale, close to the lowest, if not the lowest end in terms of the cost. You used the word smart for this investment, and indeed, saving taxpayers $3 million dollars of renovations for the old property, saving taxpayers 
and monthly costs, 50% on monthly costs, saving taxpayers in this, uh, actually getting a return on investment of that property because the old property, you'll be able to sell it for more money. You'll actually put $4 million back in the bank of Canadian taxpayers, smart. The new apartment is also more accessible than the old apartment and it is more functional. There's a value add. You're gonna be able to host more meetings and important meetings uh, in that space. Meetings that are incredibly vital, especially to border communities like mine. $1 trillion of trade, a third of that goes through my border in Windsor to come see. 90% sir, of what we manufacture is exported to the United States. 90% of what we grow, the farmers grow in my community, gets exported to the United States. And so I value the vital mission of uh, the head of mission and the consulate in New York. It's an important part of the prosperity. The work that you do is important to the prosperity of my community and border communities like ours in Windsor to come see. And so I just wanted to say thank you, sir, for your service, for your decades of service to this country. I thank you for your integrity. I thank you for coming here, uh, answering our questions, providing us an insight into how the uh, real property procurement process um, uh, is managed. I thank you for the good work, for the smart investment. Um, I do wish you good luck in the next round of, of negotiations uh, with our American friends and partners when we do ne renegotiate important trade uh, agreements like NAFTA. We know how important it is in Windsor to come see. We know that it set the table for $50 billion of investment in manufacturing in southwestern Ontario, $50 billion. We were able to revive manufacturing in southwestern Ontario. Billions invested in Windsor, the battery plant. Billions in St. Thomas. Billions in Alliston. Billions uh, in, uh, in across the board. And uh, that was because of the good work that we were able to do in large part because of our trade missions. Uh, complete revitalization, revival of the manufacturing and automotive sector in southwestern Ontario. The work that you do, sir, is important. It's vital. We appreciate it. We want to make sure that you have all the resources that you need to compete and to be able to deliver for Canadians not only good value, good jobs, good investments. And I thank you, sir, for being here today. Almost perfect timing, Mr. Kuzmirchuk. Thanks very much. Uh, witnesses, just uh, real quickly, we passed a motion in this committee that any documents requested, unless a date is set, are required within 21 uh, days, calendar days. So I appreciate if you could follow that. I just have a couple quick questions, if, uh, if you do not mind. Uh, the issue of the accessibility has come up several times, and I know it came in the notes as one of the justifications to uh, purchase a... Uh, a new apartment. It also came up a uh, commentary of several hundred buildings we own or residences we own around the world. Would you provide back in writing within 21 days how many other offices or residences are being sold or renovated because of the accessibility rules that you've stated as justification for the New York purchase? And Ms. Grothers, you didn't get much chance to talk today, so I'm going to give you an opportunity. In the, uh, the vote five from last year's or this year's uh, uh, main estimates, there was $182.5 million for capital. Was the purchase for this property in that 182? So was it part of the SAPE or the main estimates? For the question, Mr. Chair, um, in part of our $182 million in budget in vote five, um, we would have our regular um, budget, uh, which would consist of about $69 million. Um, that funding would be allocated to our real property colleagues. Um, and as part right, of our. But was there specific? Was it part of. Because you have to justify yeah. that as your Treasury Board submission. Was there a specific set aside for the New York purchase? Yeah, as is part what of I'm our, asking. Yeah. It, the funding for the New York purchase would have been part of that funding, correct. Perfect. And the sale, will that go back into general revenues and then requested be repurposed for other purposes? Uh, that's correct. Um, when the uh, when the residence is sold, that funding will go back into the fiscal framework and our department will have the opportunity to access that funding through the main estimates. Is there intent to access that through the next SUPS? Uh, that we would... We, 
currently have about $215 million that's available within our proceeds of sale within the f fiscal framework. And so um, once the funding that we currently have uh, in the fiscal framework um, is actually depleted, then of course we would go back in and request for further okay. funding. For the uh, last or this year's mains, would you be able to provide to the committee then? Like you, you mentioned that there was a request, so a Treasury Board submission for the money for the New York purchase. Would you be able to provide to us the other um, submissions that make up that uh, 182 and a half million uh, from the vote five? What we would be able to do perhaps is to provide to you um, our departmental plans just to, that would uh, list uh, uh, how we are projecting I, to spend I've read that the departmental plans. There's not the information <laughs> in there. Can you provide for the vote five, the justification that you would have presented to the Treasury Board? We didn't for provide the a specific uh, justification to it's the Treasury just Board. Just a for random that lump sum? Well, it would be part of our overall planning in terms of that at the beginning of the fiscal okay. year. Why don't we settle on any of the uh, documents you might have or any of the numbers you have to justify the 182.5? We can certainly do that. <laughs> I don't appreciate that. <laughs> and, yeah, and just one last request. So we were asking, I'm sure you watched yesterday's uh, meeting, we were asking for the appraisal and we got bogged down. Could you let us know, perhaps in writing, how many people have access to that appraisal outside of within and also outside of the government as well, Certainly. if real estate agents, because PSBC mentioned uh, real estate agents and a few other may have, have access to that appraisal. Mm -hmm. I'd just like to figure out who has it. Ms. Block? Just real quickly, point of order, Chair. I just want to ensure, because of some of uh, the conversation that uh, went on after I asked for um, the tabling with the committee, the list of the events together with the purpose of the events, the number of attendees and the dates, if that was agreed to. I, thought that was, I saw nods when it was requested. Okay. We're clear what we're looking for? Information that we could provide uh, in the period you. that you've asked. Thank you. <laughs> Witnesses here today, thank you very much. Mr. McCubbing uh, from New York, thanks very much for joining us. We are adjourned. We'll see everyone. Oh, I apologize. Thank you, Vice Chair. Um, everyone received a copy of the, the budget mm -hmm. for these three meetings. Can we just have, as usual, we won't spend all of that, but we have to put in the total. We're in Absolutely. agreement. Mr. Jawari, thank you very much for reminding me. I got carried away with the estimates. I know, Surprise. I noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.